The iPad OS 18 beta is out, and whether you're taking the plunge now or waiting for the official release in a couple months, I'm gonna cover some of the top features to know coming to your iPad in five different core areas. And to the viewer from last year that commented on my iPad OS 17 video with another year without a calculator, which got over 900 likes, guess what, sir or ma'am? Happy birthday to you. All right, let's dig in. The first thing I wanna mention is Apple intelligence. Right now, not really that testable. If interested, be sure to hit subscribe as I'll do an entire video solely focused on Apple Intelligence when it is available. There's lots of great details on their website if interested on cool new features with writing, notifications, creating images, Siri, and more. But for now, I'm gonna stay off of that and on to the next topic. First, let's talk about Control Center where we saw a number of improvements with iPadOS 18. To access Control Center, you swipe down from the top right corner of the screen. From there, you can do things like control your music, turn on and off Wi-Fi, control smart devices, and more. When looking at all these icons, if you hold your finger on the screen, you can not only move them around, but you can also drag the corner to enlarge them to various sizes to customize to your liking. If you want something to have more prominence, you can do that. You can tap Add a control where there's a laundry list of other options you can add broken out into categories like connectivity, display and brightness, shortcuts, and more. One thing that has sort of bothered me when using the device in bed at night is how bright the keyboard can be, and I sense there probably was a way to turn it down or off, but it was something I just never really got into. However, I noticed there was an option to add this in my control center, which is a fantastic option, so now when I need to, I can dim or completely turn off the lights on the Magic Keyboard when wanted. I do like the new power icon on the top right for a quick turning off the device. Between my phone and iPad, I'll once in a while forget what buttons I am holding to power down and this just makes a new process for me that should work you know, 100% of the time. Probably my favorite new screen is a dedicated screen for Apple HomeKit controls as I'm always controlling doors, temps, different lights or scenes, so this area is really appreciated. Three wishes I wonder as I use this more and further customize it. Would I want a wider, perhaps full width control center so I can see more options at once versus swiping through multiple screens? Right now, it sort of mimics that skinny view on your iPhone and while it works for the phone, I'm not sure if it's the best implementation for the iPad. Second, when adding a new control widget, I wish they indicated which items were already on your screen, perhaps with a blue versus gray shading so that you could easily identify what other options are available to use that you haven't already. Just some way to differentiate it so when you're scrolling through, you can tell what you've used and what you haven't. Third, I wish I could just rearrange these pages. At least on my iPhone, it feels like you can hold the icons and it kind of gets bigger and there's haptic feedback and it, it feels like there's something more you can do. But in fact, there's nothing you can do. And you know, maybe this is still an area of the OS that they're finishing, but all in all, there's a lot of welcome changes. And as a final note, we should be getting third-party options in the future from other app makers, which will only add to the cool things we can do in the control center. Now let's cover a few updates in Apple Notes. First, let's talk about handwriting with SmartScript. SmartScript uses an on-device machine learning model to recreate your handwriting style. Now I have Horrible handwriting, much like a third grader, and I really appreciate this. You know, I can jot notes, tap refine, and they'll be smoother, straighter, and much more legible. You can also paste type text in your handwriting. So if you want it really neat and you want to keep specific notes consistent, you can do that. You can also correct spelling in line, can touch and drag to reflow your text, and scratch out writing to remove it. Now I can't help think that the journal app, which is only available on the iPhone, is just steps away from being on the iPad, especially with all these new handwriting improvements, the ability to search within text, and more. Next, I wanna talk about live audio transcription in Apple Notes. This is a very welcome feature. In the past, I've actually used dictation to write notes, and if attaching a recording, you first had to start in the Voice Memos app, record, and then send it to a new Apple Note. Now you can record audio sessions within a note and generate live audio transcriptions. They're searchable and you can combine them with other comments, checklists, or documents that you attach. All of this really adding to the horsepower of the Notes app if you use audio as well. Now you can make your notes pop with color. To do this, simply select some text, hit your format button, and at the top, you can have your highlighter option. If you want, you can choose between five different colors and whether you're in light mode or dark mode, 
All options will be visible, which has been a fault of some other apps in the past. You can now also have collapsible sections in Apple Notes. And this one I really like as I can make some pretty beefy notes time to time. And this just makes me able to hide text within certain sections and their headers, making it easy to organize, scan, and get the pertinent information right away in my notes. I will have to admit though, it hasn't been the easiest for me breaking up clean and separate sections without having everything condensed under one header. But we could chalk that up to you know, some user error for now, but my gut is this could be a little easier. Next, I wanna cover the password app. Basically, what Apple has done is combined all the various settings in the settings app into a standalone app that has your Wi-Fi passwords, pass keys, and all your other passwords for apps and websites. This is a huge win for me as my life depends on this storage. And now that passwords are easier to manage, to share with family, to better view potential security issues, I'm all in. I used to be of the mindset that I would never use a password app and that I'd continue on life with my own little mental system, but that became more and more impossible with all the different accounts I have and the different password requirements out there. I now have Apple manage and create literally 98% of my passwords. And for the most part, I don't even know any of my passwords anymore. And it's just huge random strings. And this has actually been working really well in my life. The home screen also got updates. Now you can move icons anywhere. And if you want them at the bottom, you can have them at the bottom. If you want them on the right side, that's fine too. You can also hold your finger down and tap edit and then customize. And here you can change if you want dark or light icons, or if you want it to change automatically. You'll see one of the many bugs I have found so far in the beta. And for this instance, whenever I do this, my wallpaper goes sideways. I can fix it, but when I try to do it again, the wallpaper continues to have a mind of its own, but I'm confident Apple will fix this and we'll just move on for now. With the dark mode, not all third-party apps have dark options quite yet, but assuming over time, it will address this. You can also tint the icons and screen elements with a couple sliders, and I'm sure some will like it, but I don't think it really is for me. You can also tap the large button if you want to see bigger icons, but doing that will also get rid of the app labels. So just a little bit more customization if you want it. Last feature I want to cover on the home screen is the ability to hide apps and require face ID. To do this, you can long press on an app and tap require face ID. And when you try to go back into the app, it'll first attempt to scan you and authenticate you in. Another option is to hide the app and require face ID. And to do this, long press, and after you hit require face ID, tap hide and require face ID. This will send it to a new hidden app folder in your app library where you'll need a face scan to access whatever apps you have in there. As I joked about at the beginning of the video, the calculator app is now on the iPad with a few extra bells and whistles. This is plain sorcery, and unfortunately my days of schooling are done. When you open the calculator app, you have the regular or scientific calculator, which is pretty neat, but you can also go into this new mode called Math Notes. In Math Notes, you can write any equation, and the beauty is that you just, if you have an Apple Pencil, you can do it all by hand. Once you put in the equal sign, it will solve it on the spot. You can also add additional variables, and it will churn through those as well. And if you go back and edit the initial values, everything will automatically update. Last thing I'll say on the calculator is all math notes that you take will sync over to the regular notes app in their own dedicated section for you to browse later. And you continue to do all the math notes within the notes app, whether on existing math notes or any regular note you may have. So that's it for this round. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you wanna see the iPhone version as well as more on the Apple intelligence. And until then, we'll see you on the next one.